we always leave late at night so that we try to get to North Carolina um, just, just after dawn so that we could drive through most of the place, most of the South in the dark, because uh, my father felt that was safer. Three or four times a year, I would go back and forth to Georgia. But I knew I wasn't supposed to stop at night to buy any gas or do anything, not even to use the bathroom. If you had to relieve yourself, there was always some kind of can in the back of the car. And mostly for the adults, because the, with the children, they just opened both of the car doors and the kids stood between the car doors and used the potty. Washcloths, some wet, wrapped up in wax paper. I don't recall that we even, uh, in my early travels that we even had, we didn't have any plastic bags. You know, it was wrapped up in wax paper because we'd have to use the bathroom on the side of the road. You tried to get everything you needed when it was daylight. It, that included gas. If you gave them a 20 to buy gas, you didn't get any change back. And if you said anything, they might cause the law or hit you upside the head. Wasn't no change, you didn't get no change. So what you tried to do is buy what little gas with the small, smallest money you had. We would look at green books and we would look at things to sort of help us figure out where we could go. But the one thing I remember more consistently was that my father believed that the only place you bought gasoline from was from Esso, which is now Exxon. He would drive around, almost running out of gas, passing shell stations until he could get to the Esso. And finally I asked him, I said, okay, help me understand this loyalty. And his argument was that in the 30s and 40s, when he was a kid going to visit his father's family, Esso was the only gas station that would allow black people the dignity of using the toilet on an equal terms as white visitors. And so the notion of unpredictability of racism, that it would tap you on your shoulder at moments you didn't expect, was really the key. And I think that the Green Book actually gave you that confidence that you wouldn't be tapped on the shoulder unexpectedly. And if you could live your life knowing that racism was there, but knowing when you had to confront it, my goodness, that was an amazing gift.